So, welcome to the third part of this lecture and continuing to talk about posture and balance. We're not going to ask the question, can an infant learn to walk before they stand still? No. The infant must first be able to remain balanced while standing before they can maintain their posture in locomotion. You can see here that there's no way that this little girl would be able to walk because she can't even stand up without falling over, let alone try and move when she's trying to maintain her balance. This video is so cute and adorable. I absolutely love it. Developing the ability to maintain balance is fundamental as a precursor to the development of fundamental motor skills, such as walking, hopping, jumping. As we age, there's a degeneration of the balance control system, which is why falling is such a concern for older adults. How does the ability to control balance change with age? The answer to this question depends on how balance is defined and how balance is assessed. Balance should be assessed based on the goal. The traditional approaches are static versus dynamic balance, testing different balance strategies, and the use of perceptual information. Slide behind. Static versus dynamic balance. Some argue that we are never static because we're always moving. The typical tasks in a static control have goals where the individuals need to remain still. In dynamic tasks, the difference is the goal is to recover successfully from a perturbation. Static assessments typically examine postural sway or the amount of movement the individual produces, and these studies typically use a platform to measure the amount of movement. Participants are generally asked to hold still in a variety of configurations, such as standing on one foot, or we re may remove sensory feedback by asking the participant to close their eyes. Some typical measures of postural sway include amplitude of sway, length of the sway, the area over which the sway occurs, the velocity of the sway, and the frequency of the sway. For all these measures, less implies more postural control. Other static assessments will have participants stand on a compliant or different surface, or on a stabilometer, which is a balance board, and measure the above measures to see how well the people are able to remain still while on these difficult surfaces. Results from studies measuring static balance have found that children under 10 and over 60 exhibit greater postural sway and there is more postural sway when the eyes are closed compared to when they are open. There's also more postural sway for all age groups when standing on a compliant surface. In perturbation studies, researchers oftentimes rotate or change the platform upon which the participant is standing and measure the time to recover or the muscle firing it takes to recover through EMG. You can see here that there are EMG signals that are attached to the participant and they measure the muscle firing pattern when they move the bore in order to perturb the child, in this case, his balance. Typical balance strategies during perturbation are movements based around the ankle, the hip, as well as taking a step. Based on EMG data from these perturbation studies, the distal locations are activated first, and the ankle is activated followed by the activation of the hip. From 15 months, to, when studying this concept developmentally, they found that from 15 months to 3 years, similar muscle activation patterns 
occur in these age groups compared to adults, where distal is activated before proximal, but there is a longer latency period of activation that takes place, meaning that the children activate for a longer period of time compared to the adults. When studying children four to six years old, the organization looks worse and children in these age groups tend to take longer to regain balance compared to younger children as well as adults. They also have greater variability in the conditions that don't have vision. At seven years, the pattern reemerges and the organization begins to look adult-like again, with distal activation occurring before proximal. A possible explanation for these results is that the four to six year olds may be experiencing some sort of recalibration where they are freezing the postural control system in order to explore methods of maintaining balance. By the age of seven, they have discovered the optimal solution and decided to stick with it. The concept of freezing and freeing the degrees of freedom is where you simplify the control by freezing the system to make it less redundant. With practice then, you can combine more degrees of freedom and utilize relatively strong forces arising. Think of when you see a novice perform a task. They often look stiff compared to the expert because they are restricting their degrees of freedom in order to simplify their task. So children who are learning to gain their posture at ages four to six tend to stiffen up and freeze the degrees of freedom when trying to maintain the balance, showing a weird muscle activation compared to adults. We're lastly going to talk about visual perturbation. These tend to be easy to study because we can easily add or remove visual feedback and determine how postural sway occurs. Postural sway increases when vision is removed, and moving the visual information can perturb balance. The moving room paradigm we saw earlier in this lecture is a way to study the effects of visual perturbation. Younger children, many times, will lose their balance when the environment around them moves. It's visual information in maintaining balance. In most adults, even when doing a difficult task, the sway is small, and balance is easily maintained. But if visual information is important, then it should be possible to upset a subject's balance in an experimental room by moving the room gently forwards or backwards. Infants learning to stand are less stable than the adult, and far more easily put off balance. The infant in this experiment has only been walking for a month. When we move the room backwards, the child falls. And again. In 92 trials of this type with seven infants, balance was clearly disturbed in the predicted direction in 82% of the trials. It seems then that for the infant learning to maintain balance, visual information is far more potent than mechanical information. So in the study, they took five, seven, nine, and 13 month old infants and placed them in a moving room paradigm and moved the room at two different speeds. The results were that action was linked to movement speed of the room and there was more action taken when the room was moving faster. Once the infants had more experience sitting and developed more postural control in the seated configuration, they responded better to the moving room paradigm. We're going to pause here and we're just going to finish the last part of this lecture in the fourth one. There's about a few slides left only, but these videos can only be about 10 minutes long.